Hi, this is David Abonic Turtle with second in my CFA series on financial reporting. In this video, I'd like to introduce the use of debits and credits in the traditional accounting system. And this is refers to the T accounts. And in very general terms, a T account has a debit on the left hand side and a credit on the right hand side. And this is the general principle. The key idea is that for a given transaction, our total debits must equal our total credits. So this T account here is related to a stylized balance sheet. And we say assets are on the left hand side of the balance sheet and they must equal in total liabilities plus owner's equity on the right hand side of the balance sheet. So why is there a relationship there? Well, because the debits and credits are left and right. If we're gonna increase an asset, it's a debit to an asset account. If we're going to increase a liability, it's a credit to a liability account. So let's take just some examples here and just pretend that we're starting a company that's going to manufacture and sell books. And we're lucky enough to get started with some investor capital. So our investors are going to fund our startup with $100,000 in seed capital. So that's our first transaction. $100,000 received. Cash is an asset account. And so it's a debit of 100,000 to cash. Common stock or contributed capital is gonna be an owner's equity account. And we're going to credit that also by 100,000. So here on the right hand side, an increase is a credit to that account. So one transaction has a, an entry here on cash, debit 100,000, and an offsetting entry here under owner's equity or contributed capital, credit 100,000 to contributed capital. And so if we look at the corresponding journal entries here, then we can see cash here is the account we debit 100,000, and we know cash is an asset account, so by debiting we're increasing, and then we've got the contributed capital common stock account, and we're gonna credit that account, we know that's also an increase. And the key idea here is that our debits equals our total credits. We've only got one of each, but we could have them broken down into several different accounts. So let's go forward with another example. And let's say now we're going to use $12,000 of that 100 to buy some of our equipment so we can make some books. So now here again, cash is involved. We're going to pay cash for our equipment, but this time we're spending cash, cash being that um, asset account, and so it's gonna be a reduction of cash, and therefore, we're going to credit cash. But what are we gonna get for that? We're gonna get some office equipment. That's also an asset, so we're increasing that equipment. So we're going to debit our asset account, in, in particular, the office equipment account. And so journal entries here, we're debiting office equipment account, so that's an increase, in of $12,000 in our office equipment. How did we get it? We got it by crediting our cash account of also 12,000. And again, debits equals credit, but this time it's reduction of cash. But notice they're both asset accounts, so our total assets are gonna be unchanged. It's just that we converted 12,000 of the cash asset into 12,000 of the office equipment asset. And then now notice cash has been impacted by two different uh, transactions so far, so that if we looked at them cumulatively, as we would do in the general ledger, we would have the 100,000 that was a debit, that was money received from the investors, but then there was a $12,000 credit that was money spent for the equipment, and they would be netted out here to produce the 88,000 in cash that we're currently carrying. Now the other thing to remember is that we're using an accrual system here, so cash may or may not be involved. Now let's pretend that, or let's assume that the equipment that we purchased has a 24 month useful life. And we go forward one month in time. We have 12,000 in equipment with a 24 month life. That means if we just depreciate straight line, the depreciation expense would be 12,000 divided by 24 or $500 per month. So in the first month, what would we do? 
Well, accumulated depreciation, which would be a contra asset account, would be credited 500. And depreciation expense would be debited 500. Now notice neither of these are cash transactions. Here's the journal entry, depreciation expense, debit 500, accumulate, accumulated depreciation, credit 500, credits equal debit. What have we done here? No cash has changed hands. What we've done is taken $500 in depreciation expense, allocated for that period and transferred it off the balance sheet onto the income statement. So then if we looked at the balance sheet after one month, we would get to see, if, if we looked at the footnotes, we would always would get to see the original cost of the equipment, in this case 12000 less the accumulated depreciation, which is 500 gives us net carrying value or carrying cost of our office equipment of 11500 So this would, would, this would be the carrying amount on the balance sheet, 11500 and it would have been it will reduce over time due to the depreciation expense that we've achieved to these to these T account entries. And notice again, this is not cash. This is the allocation of that original twelve thousand over the twenty four months. So for the final example here, again to show another example of an accrual <clears throat> trend, accrual type transaction. Let's take something very typical. We're going to sell to our first customer. It's a good day for us. We're selling $250 worth of books, but it's on credit. And so we're going to issue them an invoice. Now accounts receivable is an asset account. So we're going to debit accounts receivable by $250. So that's an increase of that asset account, but it's not cash. And we're also going to credit product sales revenue by 250 the same amount. So that's part of the transaction. The other part of the transaction is that the cost of these goods to us are $200. See, we've got some built-in profit there as it should be. And so we're going to take the inventory account, which is also an asset. We're now selling that inventory. We're, it, it's, it, we're giving it away or we're selling it away. So it's not, it's not going to be an increase in inventory. It's going to be decrease in inventory, which is an asset account. So we're going to credit inventory by 200. And then the corresponding or offsetting entry here is a debit of the cost of goods sold account by 200 as well. So you can see here in total, we've got accounts receivable, debiting 250, product sales of 250, credit product sales 250, cost of goods sold, debit 200, inventory, credit 200. And the debits equal the credits, which is the key idea. And here again, notice no cash has changed hands. We're shipping the product and we're shipping an invoice. The cash is going to come in maybe in a later period. So it's an accounts receivable asset account, not a cash account. And so with those um, example transactions, you can see the general theory here, a general idea. Again, the key principle here is that in the T account, debits are on the left, credits are on the right. And so the treatment of the account depends on which of these five accounting elements we're talking about. And notice we've got assets, liabilities, owner's equity. That's three. That's the basic equality. Assets must equal liabilities plus owner's equity. But we've also got these temporary or nominal accounts of expense and revenue such that if it's an expense account, an increase is a debit, a decrease is a credit, and an income account, a debit is a decrease, a credit is an increase. But for the others, here are the rules. Assets get increased with a debit, decreased with a credit. Liabilities get increased with a credit, and equities get increased with a credit. And so this basic scheme here for the five elements describes basically all of the accounts. This is David Harper of the Binocturial. Thanks for your time.